Hello, I'm Courtney, a cloud support engineer here at the AWS office in Cape Town, South Africa. In this video, I'll show you how to use EC2 Rescue to help troubleshoot issues using remote desktop connection and an Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud Windows instance. Let's get started. Sometimes you might not be able to establish a remote desktop connection to an Amazon EC2 Windows instance, even though you've confirmed that the security groups are correctly configured. When this happens, during the connection attempt, you'll receive errors such as remote access to the server is not enabled, the remote computer is not available, or the computer is turned off. You can resolve these issues using EC2 Rescue. EC2 Rescue for EC2 Windows is a troubleshooting tool you can run on your Amazon EC2 Windows Server instances online and offline. You can use the tool to troubleshoot OS level issues or to gather advanced logs and configuration files for further analysis. Because you can't access the Amazon EC2 Windows Server instance so that you can run EC2 Rescue, you must use a helper instance to access the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server instance in an offline mode. This procedure requires that the root volume of the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows instance be attached to the helper instance. Here are the prerequisites that you must follow. The helper instance must be in the same Amazon virtual private cloud and subnet of the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server instance. As best practice, create a backup in the form of an Amazon machine image or snapshot before continuing with EC2 Rescue in case you need to roll back any changes. Let's create that helper instance. Navigate to your Amazon EC2 console. Note the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server Instance VPC and subnet. Stop the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server by selecting Instance State Stop Instance. Create a new Amazon EC2 Windows Server. We'll call this our Helper Instance. Remember to create the Helper Instance in the VPC and subnet that you had noted earlier. After the helper instance has passed status checks, navigate to the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server instance. Select the Storage tab and find the EBS volume marked as forward slash dev forward slash SDA1. This name indicates the root volume that is the OS. Note this ID. Choose the EBS volume. The EBS volumes page appears with the root volume already selected. Choose Actions and choose Detach Volume. Now that the EBS volume is detached, you can attach the EBS volume to our helper instance. Choose Actions and then choose Attach Volume. An EC2 instance selector appears. Locate the helper instance and attach it. Note that if you have created the helper instance in a different VPC and subnet, you can't see the helper instance in the EC2 instance selector. Now that your EBS volume is attached to the helper instance, you can establish a connection to the helper instance using RDP. After you've connected to the helper instance, download EC2 Rescue. Extract your download and run ec2rescue.exe as administrator. You'll see the Welcome to EC2 Rescue screen. Choose Next to go to the Select Mode screen. Enter the Offline Mode. You see a list of disks legible to be worked on. Select the disk so that it is highlighted and then choose Next. Confirm that you have selected the correct disk, then choose Yes. If it is incorrect, choose No and then select the correct disk. Note the system information displayed on the left-hand side is of the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows instance. In the right-hand side, you'll see the offline options that you can select so you can see possible issues causing inaccessibility. Now select Diagnose and Rescue. The Diagnose and Rescue option will analyze the OS level 
from the attached EBS volume and list possible issues. You'll see a number of settings. Real time is universal, Windows Firewall, Remote Desktop, EC2 Config or Launch, Network Interface. Each setting and subset settings are accompanied by a symbol indicating the settings that are affected on the OS level. Red X indicates that as configured, it will prevent successful connection. Triangle with an exclamation indicates that as configured, it could possibly prevent successful connection. Green check indicates that as configured, it is properly configured for successful connection. Blue eye shares information that can be useful. This is a summary page and is information only. Choose next to go to the detected possible issues. As you can see, there are a number of possible problems with this inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server instance. I'll select all of these boxes to fix them. After making your selection, choose next to review the changes, then choose Rescue. Choose OK to confirm. The changes are completed. You can review the results of the rescue. Choose Next. The Done screen appears to confirm that the changes were applied to the volume. Choose Finish. When you exit the tool, a box appears. If you don't require any additional troubleshooting or data gathering from the disk, leave the Offline Disk option selected to take the disk offline for detachment. If any disk signature issues are detected, then make sure that the option to fix disk signatures is selected to fix any issues automatically. Choose OK to finish. The EC2 Rescue application closes. The changes made through EC2 Rescue typically resolve the inaccessibility issues for the Amazon EC2 Windows Server instance. Close your RDP session to the helper instance and navigate to the EC2 console. Select the helper instance, select the storage tab and choose the EBS volume that is not forward slash dev forward slash SDA1 or use the EBS volume ID that you noted from the previous steps. Select the EBS volume, choose actions and then detach the volume. After the volume is detached and is in an available state, attach the EBS volume back to the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server instance by choosing Actions, Attach Volume. Use the EC2 Instance Selector to select the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server instance. Now that you have selected the EC2 instance, change the device part to forward slash dev forward slash SDA1 to be sure that the EBS volume is set as the root volume for the boot process. Go back to the Instances page and select the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server instance. Start the inaccessible Amazon EC2 Windows Server by selecting Instance State Start Instance. Allow some time to pass for the Amazon EC2 Windows instance to boot and the status checks to complete. After the status checks have passed, confirm that the inaccessibility issue is fixed by testing to establish an RDP session over to the Amazon EC2 Windows instance. If you can access the OS level through an RDP session, your work is done. However, if you still can't access the Amazon EC2 Windows instance, review the screenshot of the OS to see if there is a boot issue or boot loop. To do this, select the Amazon EC2 Windows instance, choose Actions, Monitor and Troubleshooting, Get Instant Screenshot. Another cause of an inaccessible EC2 Windows instance is a registry change that is not detected by EC2 Rescue. You can use EC2 Rescue to roll back any registry changes or restore the registry. At the same time, you can also collect OS logs to review with your system administrator 
or AWS Cloud Support Engineer. And now you know how to use EC2 Rescue to help troubleshoot issues using RDP and an EC2 Windows instance. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.